Google Stay, uh, Google Hangout, and we're here to talk about tools. So my name is Stuart from toolguide.com, and we have Eric from Make. Hi, guys. And then we have uh, Michael Caster. Yep, and I'm from the Maker Shed. All right, so we're here to talk about tools. Then today will be screwdrivers. Oh, yeah, but before we start, sorry, Stuart. Uh, uh, so today on the Maker Shed, we have our 3D printing special issue on sale. Uh, if you go to makershed.com and go to the 3D printing and fabrication uh, category and then 3D printing filament and accessories, you can find this, the ultimate guide to 3D printing. $9.99, uh, shipping soon, get it while you can. Uh, yeah. Also, if you are a uh, subscribers, do not get the special issues, but if you renew your subscription today on makezine.com slash subscribe, that's $24.99 for four issues of Make. You will also get the SIP thrown in for free. Uh, as long as you type in the special code, it is MK3D. Um, and I'll, I'll mention that again at the end, but just MK3D, makezine.com slash subscribe. All right, go ahead, Stuart. Well, actually, it seems like a pretty good deal. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so screwdrivers. Well, specifically, let's talk about the precision screwdrivers, or at least to start with. Okay. So now, do you did you do the review on uh, the blog today, or do you know who did? Uh, yes, with the the cobalt. Okay. Was is that a driver? I didn't see it. Yeah, it is. Okay, let's reach over here. So, well, for now, I'll just show here. So, it's a multi bit precision driver. Normally, I do prefer individual ones. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I have a, like, separate ones. Right. Because they're a little stronger, a little more ergonomic. But when you have a precision driver like this, well, it's compact, and you can always get the bits you need without having to buy new ones. Well, without having to buy new drivers, you can just buy new bits. So. Right. Okay. And I saw when you showed it off at the beginning, does that does the driver come with the bits attached to the driver itself? Well, with this one, it's a little uh, different. It's like one of those uh, like toolbox packs. It's meant to slip uh, in. So hmm. it does detach. Okay. And it sounds like it's all metal. Is that right? No. Well, you have a little rubbery bit here, aluminum handle, and then a cap comes off to reveal like a bit compartment. Wow, and how many bits are in there? You get, you get nine double-sided bits, so it's wow. 18 in one. That's really good. Well, it's to be honest, this is not your. It's not a high quality product. It's not like mm -hmm. super precision, but it's neat. It's one of those things you throw in your toolbox and you take it when you need it. What mm -hmm. I like about it is you see the bits that come out easy, and then when you fold it closed, this locks it in. Oh, that's cool. Cool. You can see there's a little bar, so they're not going to fall out. And this one, if you don't want to risk that stabbing your stuff. You just put it into this compartment. Yeah, so how many can you hold in the back? Good question. <laughs> okay, so there's four of them in there so far. It's probably more than enough. Yeah, so you have six bits inside. Wow. So nice. can hold six, maybe another one or two. But again, with the six bits, you have 12 different tips, so it's, it should be all you need. And then if you want to carry more with you, you can just load them up into the little caddy. Mm -hmm. It's nice compact. Uh, I came across it for $5, so I mean, so why not? Yeah, you can't yeah, get wrong for that. I, that seems like, for that price, that seems like the perfect thing to like throw in a backpack, and especially if just put six of those bits in the back and throw it in a bag or something. That's it's really cheap. So who makes it? Uh, this is cobalt, so okay. you can only find it at Lowe's. Hmm. And here's another one. 
Is it a wide a, variety of bits that it comes with, or is it just mainly like flyhead and Phillips? No, it comes with slot, like flyhead, Phillips, and a couple of torques. Okay. Let's see, but they also have a ratcheting screwdriver, which I also picked up because again, it was five dollars also, and came with maybe 20, 30 bits. Figured why not? But this one is reviewed on a today's Tools Day post. The today's Tools Day review should be should be coming out uh, shortly. Cool. So speaking of drivers, um, I brought something that we carry in the maker shed. This is the iFixit driver kit. I believe, um, Michael, is it twenty five? Twenty four ninety five. So yeah, twenty four ninety five uh, on the website. Um, and this comes with fifty four bits. Uh, you have slot bits, Phillips spanner, torque, hex. Posi drive, which I've never even heard of, star bits, triangle bits, drop size bits, wing bits, and square bits. Um, the other really neat thing, I've actually never used this before, but just, just picked it up before the Hangout. Um, so the handle is all metal, um, aluminum or steel it feels like. Um, it also comes with this flexible extension um, for doing your, all your necessary bit driving needs around corners um, or at an angle, which is cool. Um, have either of you guys used this, this iFixit kit in particular? Yeah, I actually have. I don't have one, but I've used it at various maker fairs to, uh, to try to fix things, and it works really well. It seems like every little bit that you need is in that kit, and I do like that flexible shaft. It comes in real handy for, uh, for really tight angles and things. Yeah, it's pretty neat. In fact, I, I hadn't gotten this close of a look at it before, and now I think I'm going to pick one up. <laughs> the 26-piece one's pretty good, too, and that's uh, 1995 on the on Maker Shed, MKIF-1. Okay. And uh, it comes in kind of a, a plastic case. It's it's kind of a more condensed set, but it still, uh, still works pretty well. Yep, and I know that one I've used. Um, I think, doesn't it have the, the, the spring-loaded case that the bits, like, automatically pop up when you open it? Um, or I think it, I, you know, I'm not sure. I don't recall that part, but it, it might. <laughs> yeah, it, I think it does. I, I've definitely seen it before. Yeah, so when you open it up, the bits automatically pop up, and it also has tweezers inside for pulling the bits out, which is handy. Nice. Um, and it comes with a, a, a different driver than this one does. It looks like a, a thicker, and I think it's plastic. Um, but that one I have used, and it is a, a really good kit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, they are handy, and I haven't used it much, but I have one of iFixit's uh, larger like, combination things. Oh, that's the one that has everything? Yeah. Yeah, those are really cool. Like and the it computer has, repair kit. Yeah, it has spatulas, tweezers, and uh, the big kit. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, those spatulas Do you want to really showing handy. that off in your overhead cam, Stuart? Because right. I've never seen that before. I definitely want to see what all is included. Alright. Just take a second. Nice. Okay. So yeah, just and you can take the individual pieces out. So what else is in there that big go. kit? Oh, the big kit? Yeah. So this is similar to actually the cobalt. Uh, that's uh, the two today's tools they review, but. This one's a little bit of quality, made of metal. Mm -hmm. Well, more sturdy in metal. It also looks more ergonomic. You can see you have a little finger grips here. So you get a little better control with this one. Yeah, it does just feel nice in your hand. And of course, you have the rotating um, whatever thing on the back so you don't have to. Oh, so you can apply pressure and still twist it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's real nice. Pretty much, it seems like almost all drivers come with that now. Um, it is nice. Okay. And you can see these are just different prying tools. 
Like we need to spread compartments, get a ruler. Oh, yeah, those are, those are perfect for Apple products. So you can, like, get in there and, like, unhook oh, okay. the little clips without marring things up. Um, what I generally use, though, is a guitar pick. I found that works really well for getting into little places and using as a little pry bar. Mm -hmm. And there's also a uh, anti-static strap. Cool. Are those those look like thicker um, dentistry type tools or sculpting tools? Is that what they were? Well, no. They're also it looks like they're just meant for like prying tasks. Like oh, the plastic okay. ones are so you know damage the gear you're prying apart, uh, but the metal ones could also be used to scrape. Um, let's say you have to clean out the thermal paste on top of a CPU or thermal tape. Mm -hmm. This could be useful to gently scrape it off. You can see it's just like little uh, spatula. That's cool. Yeah, I was actually watching a video on um, by a guy who does CNC work on jeweling last night. It's the, the process where you use your CNC or drill press with like a piece of rubber to put that neat circular pattern on metal. Oh, oh the engine um, turn finish? Yeah. So, yeah. And he was using um, this like 90 grit paste from McMaster. Um, and he said that he like covered his whole vise and everything because apparently it'll screw up all your, your threads and stuff. But he used just like a toothpick to scrape it off. Um, but, but I imagine that would be really good for that sort of task as well. Well, actually, you would have to be careful that this doesn't uh, push it in or... Because when you're dealing with the fine abrasives, if you put so sandwich it between two surfaces, it's going to cut into the metal that you wanted uh, to create the circular finish on. Right, so you have to be really careful. <laughs> yeah, so for that, you do something like uh, maybe a rubber squeegee. Okay. Something that wouldn't mar the surface. Right. Cool. And that, Stuart, I saw recently on your um, YouTube channel you reviewed a, um, I forget what brand it was, but a like a, a driver with a gyroscope in it, so when you twist, it, it uh, turns either direction. The Black & Tech Gyro. Yeah. Do you have that lying that. around that you could show off? Uh, I do. Cool. Take a second. Yeah, it seems like a neat, neat idea. But I'd want to, I mean, we'll, we'll hear if it's gimmicky or if it actually works well. Oh, it it's definitely has a, a little gimmicky feel to it. Okay. But it, it does work well. It's one of my favorite, I guess, compact drivers. The one that it's not very sophisticated. There's no clutch. Uh, there's no uh, dustal speed settings, like two gearboxes. You just hold in your hand and twist. And it doesn't matter what angle you're at, it just, it works. The quicker you turn it to the right or left, the faster speed will be. So how do you turn it? Is there an on and off switch or a toggle that rests on your hand? Uh, there is. Uh, you can see it right here. This has to be pressed. And when you press okay. it, you'll see the, the light come on. Oh, it's uh, like, a little, like a safety. Right. Cool. So it's handy. What I like about this is it it's just so small. Yeah. So what if you what if you're trying to screw something in and you sneeze at the same time? Will that completely throw you off? Well, you wouldn't do that with any drill, especially more powerful ones. If you want to sneeze and you're Yeah, that'll <laughs> probably a bad idea. Yeah. yeah. So if you need to sneeze, just <laughs> put it down, take your hand mm -hmm. off it. Step away from the power drills. Yeah. I'd, I'd actually never seen or heard of any of those gyro tools before seeing that video on your channel. Are there a lot of things like that on the market, or is that one of the first? No, actually, this is the, the first. Okay. And uh, and they're not, they're not shy about saying that either. The marketing teams are like, this is the first gyro-controlled <laughs> screwdriver. But it, it's, it makes sense. We have the gyros in our, our phones. We have them in toys now. So, hey. And they're really cheap. In Put it in a tool. Actually, the gyroscope that's in here was designed for toys and gaming applications, things like that. Hmm. And how sturdy is it? Is it all plastic or any metal? It's, it's mostly plastic, but okay. 
uh, generally, uh, consumer tools will be mainly plastic, even the higher end uh, professional power tools, mostly plastic with little bits of metal like where you need extra strength. Right. And how expensive? Uh, this one, it's either 40 or $50. Okay. On their, on their site, it says 40 Okay, so, 40, yeah. so yeah. It, it's about what, because they've been coming out with new like pocket drivers every year. This is about the same price as uh, previous generation, so it's not that much of a premium. Is it pretty strong? Like, will it drive a pretty decent-sized screw, or is it mainly for light-duty tasks? It, it, it's meant for light-duty work. Okay. Uh, if you need, like, small assembly tasks, things like that, if you have to tie in, like, a small uh, outlet panel. But it, it, it can be useful. Mm -hmm. I had one of the previous versions for a couple years before I upgraded. So did the all the previous versions, they didn't have any dry rows, right? Right. Uh, this, this is, is the first. first. Okay, so what what was good about the previous versions? It's about what you need. If you don't need an 18 volt drill driver, you don't need something expensive, something heavy. I'm they're they're economical. Charging times you have to plug it in overnight, so it's not 30 minutes like mm -hmm. higher end uh, professional tools. But uh, for most people, if this if it's this or nothing, this is definitely better than. Uh, Better than nothing. using your hands. If you have, like, say, 150 screws to drive in, yeah, yeah this will this will yeah. do it. That's cool. And the so the previous versions were also battery powered, but just with two buttons. Yeah, generally there'd be a reverse switch and uh, like a power. So okay, you, like you, a power drill. Yeah. Okay. I've actually never used one like that before. It's, and they're they're not bad. I have. Mm, here we go. So, sorry about that, but here we have one by Skill. So this is an example of like just a traditional driver, but it's still worth buying also. It's about what you need. So this one has a reversible switch, this little black button, mm -hmm. and a trigger. But you could do neat things with these. They're small, they're compact, so it's lightweight. Yeah. And now they have uh, these neat attachments. So you can see I took the front off. Oh, 90 right degree. Right angle. Right. That's nice. So you cool. get into a, like, uh, odd angles. If you need to go flush against something, you can with this. So does it snap in at the angle you attach it at? Yep. Oh, okay. So you can see there's uh, different grooves, so locks in, uh, different angles you want. Unlocks easy. Nice. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, each product does have their own little uh, selling points. Uh, this one, you have the greater flexibility with different attachments. This one, there, there's no trigger. You just intuitively... Mm -hmm. uh, both do... Uh, they charge overnight, both of them. Uh, but the advantage is... Or the benefit, once you charge it, the lithium-ion batteries last a while, so uh, you have it when you need it. Right. That's cool. There's also, you can see this one, uh, you have a corkscrew. Ooh, that could be handy. <laughs> That's neat. I think that'd work much better than my Swiss Army knife. Yeah, but unfortunately, they make it so you can only use it with this, and you can't use it with, let's say, an 18-volt drill. <laughs> yet, maybe maybe they'll come up with. Maybe they stuff. think that might be a little too much power for wine. <laughs> well, uh, maybe it might over torque and just break the attachment. Yeah. But there's other neat stuff. Uh, try to bring up something I saw uh, in Europe. You can do a screen share. Yeah. Ah, uh, Bosch. So here, ah, well, sweet. well, it's the same company, Bosch Skill, that makes the corkscrew, but now they have a, a spice grinder. <laughs> <laughs> Got to grind some spices, whip out the drill. <laughs> yeah, but only only in Europe. We don't we don't get that yet. Okay. 
They have all the neat stuff in Europe. Diesel cars and... Nope. Yeah, they, they do. All-powerful uh, spice grinders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> they actually look in front of me. All of the favorite screwdrivers I pulled out, they're made in Europe. <laughs> so, we have one a general craftsman tool made in the USA. You know, nice. I just picked up some uh, ball drivers that are made in the USA. It's called, they're from Bond House. I got these to work on my uh, 3D printer. I have an Ultimaker that I've been putting together right here. Uh, and there are some really tight angles on this. So I uh, got these ball drivers, which have really helped out. That orange looks pretty awesome. It took a while to paint, but I, I think it was worth it in the end. <laughs> yeah, and th I have used those ball... I don't know if the, the exact same brand, but I have used those drivers before. I think Evil Mad Science sells, or includes them with the Eggbot kit, huh. um, and they're, they're really nice. Yeah, I have uh, some open, open beam here, and this is just a regular screwdriver, and this is or a regular Allen driver, and that's about as far as you can go before... Uh, you like before you can't screw it in anymore. With the ball driver, you can get clear over on the side, right? So you can go at angles up to like you know there, and I can still degrees, yeah. yeah so, well, I don't know if it's forty five, maybe like okay. whatever that is, and yeah. uh, you you can still tighten up your screws. So it's perfect for things like three D printers, yep. where there's a lot of really tight um, tight angles and stuff. Oh, yeah. there's some. Yeah. So for the people that are unsure what we're talking about, mm -hmm. so here on the left there's a ball driver, and to the right there's a, uh, a straight driver, like a straight hex. So you can see you have a set, you have a good amount of flexibility there. You don't have to go straight head into the fastener. You go at slight angle. Yeah. And also the Bontis are like one of the better brands out there, and it's pretty affordable. Yeah, I got them on Amazon. I think it was like thirteen dollars for an eight a pack of eight. The one thing I don't like though is that this uh, the head on it's really small. And so here's a Wira one from. Uh, <laughs> from Germany, and this has a lot more momentum to it, so if you're trying to take up a lot of slack in your screw before tightening, you can you can really whip this one around. This one doesn't, you can't do that as easily. So, Well, the reason for that is because uh, the, the process of putting the ball head tip on the drivers, it weakens them. So if you try uh, to, what you don't want to do is shear this ball tip off into a fastener that... Uh, that would be bad. Right. <laughs> If you have an expensive piece of equipment and you, uh, you break the tip off and you can't adjust that, you're in big trouble. Uh, so mm -hmm. they do that to limit your torque. Right. And if you yeah. notice, uh, the if you've seen the Bontis uh, T-handle drivers, mm -hmm. the smaller ones will have a much, much shorter T-handle. Again, so you don't over-torque it. But the even smaller ones won't have a ball head at all. They'll just be straight because too many people have sheared them off. Uh. Hmm. Yeah. And you can get the ball heads in different sizes. I have an yeah. Allen key over there. This is a large, uh, like a P handle or T handle. It's a ball driver. So these are great for things like bicycles and just uh, machinery, small yeah, yeah. parts, robotics. This is the I setting for my uh, CNC machine. So it has metric on one side and then standard on the other. And it's also uh, has the regular end on one side and then the ball, hand, ball end on the other. Yeah, that's really useful to have both. And one use I, I found for ball end was tightening a, a set screw uh, on my electric scooter recently. Um, it was impossible to get to with a flat head, so the ball the ball head came in handy. How's that electric scooter coming along? <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> I, I have the chain and I just I just haven't had the time to work on it and by the time I um, it's it's here at make um, but by the time the day's over and I could actually work on it, I just want to go home. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I have to just come in one day on the weekend and knock it out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, one one other um, driver that I wanted to talk about. Um, a lot of the Leathermans. It may even be not all, but a lot of the larger Leathermans. Uh, like this is a my Wave um, have the bit driver attachment, um, and this like unlocks and locks in place. Um, and the wave just comes with uh, a Phillips on one side and a flathead on the other, like a, the double-sided one. Um, but you can also buy a set of bits. And I actually, uh, this is my boss's. I don't know how, ex do you guys know how expensive these are? Um, mm, not offhand. It, it's maybe, t I'm hesitant to say, but if I recall, it was like $16 or $20 for a, 
like a big kit of like two. You have two cartridges, and then yeah, uh, full this is of just it. this is just one cartridge. I think it came with more, but um, there's a good range of bits here. Um, there are some square bits, some torque, um, down to some really really fine point stuff. Um, and these are awesome, of course, if you have a Leatherman, which I know a lot of people do. Um, you can do lots of bit driving. Yeah, I like the fact that it's replaceable too. So if you, you know, you, know, you shouldn't use it like a pry or for prying, but if you do, you don't permanently bend what's on your tool. Right, you just bend the bit. Yeah. Well, and they're they really well made. Okay, the, uh, the bit drivers are $18, I was hmm. just told. Yeah. Um, so that's actually pretty reasonable. And again, these are um, steel, really, really beefy. Um, I'm a huge fan of leather, man. They make good stuff. Is that standard size? Like, can you put that in, like, a quarter-inch um, drill driver? Or? You I don't can. Think so because they're yeah. very flat. So I think they only fit in, in the Leatherman bit driver tool. Oh. Well, they, they will physically fit inside of a regular hex bit screwdriver. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. So just, just in case you need it. Right, like it will fit into one of these if mm -hmm. you need it, just you can't pull out torque on it. Uh, but yeah. similarly, they also do make uh, an extension that fits into the that's Leatherman right. so you can use regular bits with it. Ooh. Okay. And that's... So it fits in this slot and then you could fit normal right. hex. Okay. It's maybe ten dollars, something like that. Mm -hmm. And it, it it comes in handy, but it adds to the size, and you have to or uh, be carrying the bits anyways. Uh, these small flat cartridges are designed for portability, so they come in handy. Yeah. Cool. Well, Michael, do you have any other? Um, I know you're more aware of what's on the shed than than I am. Um, other than the iFixit kits that we mentioned, do we have any other good bit drivers? Um, those are the the main two that we carry. Um, and yeah, again, for anyone that missed it, um, this is one of them. I know Stuart showed it off as well. Uh, this is twenty four ninety five. Comes with fifty four bits. Um, the metal handle, along with a flexible extender, <clears throat> which of course is optional to attach. Um, but really, really awesome. I just, I'm definitely gonna pick one up for myself. We do have the uh, getaway driver. I think it's made by um, Columbia River Knife Company. Um, it has a bottle opener on it, a flashlight, then it's a ratcheting head too, and it holds several bits. So it's more like a just in case you need it kind of deal. It can fit on your key ring. Okay. I've seen that one before. It looked pretty compact, but does it take standard bits or something special? You know, it looks like they're quarter inch. Um, I can only tell so much from the picture, but it, it looks like it, I and mean, don't hold me to it. <laughs> and how how much is that on the shed? Uh, that one's nineteen ninety nine. Cool. Yeah. Um, so this one's twenty four ninety five, and then we also carry the the one with fewer bits. I think it was twenty five or twenty six bits, uh, which is nineteen ninety five, I believe. Um, so those are both available on the shed. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, here's the uh, yeah fix it bit kit you're talking about, and since I have it open, uh, the Leatherman, uh, oops, there it goes, the Leatherman uh, bit driver extender. So this fits into uh, the regular bit holder. This thing, yeah. And then you put the quarter inch bits on the other side. Nice. Cool. Yeah, yeah and we do sell, uh, we have the customized Leathermans in the shed. They're the, the, or the, um, the so Juice like, series. Yeah. So yeah, they're, uh, laser etched with make, and so we have fun names like Circuit Breaker and Bomb Diffuser. Mm -hmm. um, probably shouldn't take that one through the airport. Uh, <laughs> warranty Voider, Can Opener. Nice. And those are are pretty reasonably priced too, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, the Circuit Breaker and the Bomb Diffuser are on sale for $31, and so is the Warranty Voider. Then we have the, the big one, the CS4, and that's uh, 65 And yeah, that's priced down from 75 I have one of the smaller ones... Um, for years uh, before I upgraded to one of the big waves, and it's super handy. So, all right, guys. Well, I think we're pretty much out of time. Any final thoughts before I uh, 
pitch the sip again? Nope. All right. Okay. So, again, we did the, spent a lot of time over the past few months working on the 3D printer ultimate special interest print. Um, reminder, subscribers do not get this. So um, you can go on the Maker Shed. Uh, we just launched this online on the Maker Shed today. Uh, it's ten bucks. Super awesome deal. This thing is packed um, with reviews of each machine, uh, over fifteen machines, as well as three D printing tips. Pretty much everything you need to know about three D printing. If you're looking into buying a machine, you definitely want to pick this up. Um, so you can go to makescene.com/slash/subscribe. If you subscribe for four issues of the magazine and type in the code MK3D, uh, you will get this for free. Uh, that's $24.95 for a full year of the magazine plus this awesome deal. Um, as well, uh, this Thursday, the 15th, we have our first ever international 3D printing meetup. So uh, if you go to meetup.com slash maker meetup, um, you can start a meetup in your own community or join others nearby for talking about 3D printing. Um, also, if you're in this area in California and we're in Sebastopol, um, we will be doing uh, a meetup here as well as a live hangout on air. Uh, that will be 6 p.m. Um, Pacific time. So come visit us in Sebastopol if you're around. If not, go to meetup.com slash maker meetup and find a meetup in your area. Yep. All right, and I think that's pretty much it. Yep, looks like it. All right, guys. Well, um, Stuart, you want to tell everyone what we usually do for, for Tuesday and then finish it up? Well, yeah, Tuesday is uh, Tools Day. So, and if you look now, the review has been up about the Cobalt Precision Driver we spoke about earlier in, uh, early in the Hangout. And, yeah, so we'll see everybody next week. I'm Stuart from toolguide.com. Yep. I'm Eric from uh, from Make Here. I do product development. And I'm Michael, and I do Make in the Maker Shed. So a little bit of everything. Yep. All right, so we will see you guys later. Thanks for joining us. Right. Bye. Yep, see you later.